Howard Franklin Thurston was born in Columbus, Ohio in 1869. Uh, he was a confidence man, he was a carnival operator, and he then turned his back on all of that and became a successful man of the American theater. He was America's greatest magician from 1908 until his death in 1936. I think one of the most interesting aspects of Thurston's career is that when he was a young man, he was almost institutionalized. He was almost incarcerated. And he took that experience as a con man and as a petty criminal, and he used it and applied it to his magic. Now, his friends didn't know that that was the case. In fact, he hid all of that part of his career, and he became a great man of the American theater. But we can see that all of those instincts as a con man, as a, as a carnival worker, were all applied to his career as he built himself up through his, for, through his life. Thurston had a fascinating career because it spanned so much of American show business. He started in carnivals as a carnival barker. He toured the Wild West in, uh, in wagons uh, doing itinerant shows. And then he became an enormous star in vaudeville. His career had amazing ups and downs. Uh, when he was 30 years old, he, he literally had no prospects. And then within weeks was the, was the greatest star in American vaudeville. But probably the most important event in his career was when he inherited the title of America's Greatest Magician from a man named Harry Keller. And it was a long tradition that had preceded him. So Thurston was really crowned in front of the public as the greatest magician in America. Howard Thurston was part of an amazing tradition of magic, the Great American Magic Show. But what he finally did with it was quite astonishing because he took it and made it more than just the magician. For the first time with the Thurston Show, you had a show that was the equivalent of a Broadway spectacular. It was on the par with the Ziegfeld Show or George M. Cohen Show. It was, had as much respect as a Ringling Brothers Circus. And so the Thurston Show became an American institution. It was a, filled with a, a cast of beautiful girls. It had elaborate illusions in it, live animals, and it set the standard for how magic was then perceived in the 20th century, particularly in Las Vegas. In order to be successful, the Thurston Show had to change every year because it kept going back to the same audiences. And Thurston found that the secret was to increase the size and scope of his tricks. So he was famous for a number of enormous tricks like the disappearing horse, disappearing automobile, and the Indian rope trick which he performed on stage. But probably his greatest trick was the levitation of a human being. Harry Houdini and Howard Thurston were contemporaries and they were friends and they were rivals all through their careers. And Today, we remember Houdini as a great magician. It's interesting that in this day, the public didn't regard him as a magician. They regarded him as an escape artist. And he worked in vaudeville shows. And it was really a different kind of act. Houdini's act was that he was locked in something and then escaped. And only a few times in his career did he actually even perform a magic show. So although Houdini was insanely jealous of Thurston for being a great magician, he always wanted the career as the magician. It was Thurston who actually achieved that title with the American public. And he was the one that was regarded as America's great magician in the teens and the 20s. Houdini was the first amazing American publicist. He was really on a level, the generation after Barnum, he was on a level with Barnum. And Houdini created the myth of Harry Houdini, the, the, the little man who couldn't be held, who escaped to all bonds. And it was a, a really appealing image for a vaudeville act, but I think what we see is that it went on to be mythologized, it became bigger than life. And every year since his death, he's become more and more famous. Thurston, on the other hand, followed a tradition of magician, and that tradition was designed to create these wonders in the theater. Unfortunately, although he was successful in his career, he was forgotten every year that passes. The interesting part of the rivalry between Thurston and Houdini is that it started very early. They knew each other as they were young men in 1893 when they were both working at the carnival at the Midway at the Chicago World's Fair. And they both had dreams of becoming great magicians, and they both went on to achieve those dreams in very different forms. They kept intersecting all through their careers, and in fact they were both members of the Society of American Magicians at the same time, and were both respected by the public. But Thurston was the one who had the enormous magic show that traveled by train, 40 tons of equipment, 20 assistants, a bevy of beautiful dancers that worked with him. And Houdini persisted in vaudeville when what he was doing was really an escape act with handcuffs or with tanks of water where he would get in something and then escape. They both became famous in their own fields, but they always had a rivalry between the two of them because Houdini remained successful in vaudeville and he always aspired to have the sort of magic show that Thurston had achieved. It's tough to measure who we should consider the greatest magician today. Certainly Houdini achieved the mythological status. 
and his name has entered the language as a kind of mythical figure like Merlin. But it's sad that Thurston isn't remembered today because Thurston was, a, was an institution, the Thurston Show was an American institution, and what he did for magic and how he established it on the stage was, was really amazing. And I think, unfortunately, in remembering one or two of these names, we've forgotten some of the real pioneers. Thurston's career was astonishing, and what he achieved from the all the way the down and dirty show business to the heights of Broadway and the success in, uh, in vaudeville and, and music hall deserves to be remembered because he really changed the way we look at entertainment.